Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're talking the flanger audio effect here in our audio series. Did you like that little voice there? Was that cool? Something you're looking to do? All right, not typically how I would use the flanger effect, but you wouldn't believe how many people actually ask, how can I make a weird sound in voice, right? In DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> well, the flanger effect is one way that you can do that. But typically, I'm thinking about this sound on something like a guitar, right? And if you ever heard any of the 80s big hair bands, right? You're talking Van Halen, guys like that. You probably heard this effect before, and maybe you didn't even know it. But if you've heard any of that music, as soon as we get into some of these examples here, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I've heard that plenty of times, right? So what does a flanger do? So a flanger basically takes your original audio, it duplicates it and then delays it. And then the way that delayed signal interacts with the original signal gives you those cool sounds that uh, you might be familiar with. Now this is very similar to the chorus effect that we looked at in the last video. So what's the difference between the chorus effect and the flanger? Well, for one, the flanger is gonna give you a shorter delay time which is just gonna give you a different sound. It depends on what you're looking for. And you're gonna see some examples here of what the flanger sounds like in a minute. Also with the chorus effect, it's kind of affecting more of the lower range of frequencies, whereas the flanger affects a little bit more of the higher end of the frequencies. So we're gonna cover this effect just like we have done with all of our other effects. We're gonna jump into Resolve, run over the window, tell you what all the knobs, the buttons, and the dials do. And then I'm gonna show you a few examples of what this sounds like, not only on that voice clip that was there in the beginning, but also on a guitar, which is probably the way that you're used to hearing this effect. But hey, if you're new here and this is the first video you're checking out on my channel, my name's Jay Yudlowski, and we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve, audio stuff, video stuff, all the good stuff that you can do in DaVinci Resolve. And I also give you some YouTube tips here and there to help you grow your channel as well as talk about some gear stuff once in a while because we all love some gear stuff right let's be honest who doesn't love gear right so if you're into any of those and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me all right let's jump over into resolve and check out this effect so like always when we get into some audio work i'm gonna grab my headphones put on some headphones you don't need them but for me i think it works uh, pretty good to have them on there just hear things a little bit better so here in davinci resolve before we can even take a look at the effect we need to add it on to either a clip or a track so right now I'm in the edit tab. You look right here, I'm in the edit tab. I've got two sample clips here. One is a guitar, one's a voice. And let's say I wanna add the effect onto just one particular clip. To do that in the edit tab here, you wanna come up to your effects library. Go ahead and open that up. You wanna come down to audio and fair light effects. And then you wanna come on over to the flanger. Now you can just click, hold and drag and drop it right onto a clip. And you can see here's our window, which we're gonna run over in a second. But I'm gonna close this because let's say I wanna apply it to the whole track. I don't wanna apply it to just one particular clip. Now I might wanna do this uh, on a voice or something. If it's just a little clip, you could do that if you want. But uh, we're gonna jump into Fairlight and I'm gonna apply it to the whole track and we'll take a look at it over there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this. I'm actually gonna Command Z and undo that. And then we wanna jump over into the Fairlight tab. So you got the little musical notes here. Go ahead and click on that. It's gonna bring you into the Fairlight tab. So now that we're over here, again, we've got some options on how we can add the effect onto the track. You can come up here to your effects library. Again, audio effects right here. It's in the Fairlight effects. So once you see the flanger effect, you can go ahead and click, hold and drag and either drop it onto your clip. Or if you come over here by the track name, you can drop it here and it's gonna to apply to the whole track. So let me just close that, undo that, because there's another way we can add it in. We can add it right through our mixer if you'd like to do it that way. So here I've got my mixer open. If you don't see your mixer, come on up to the top of the screen here, click on this guy. That's gonna go ahead and open up the mixer for you. The next thing you wanna do is come down here in the mixer and you wanna look at the effects right here. And if for some reason you don't see your effects, you can always click on these three little dots and make sure you've got effects checked on. Now let's say you have it checked on and you still can't see it, it looks like this. I'll come in here and just scroll your mouse wheel up and down, and then that should uh, reveal the effects area for you. So to add the flanger this way, go ahead and click on the plus. You wanna come on down to modulation, and that's where we've got the flanger right here. Just go ahead and click on it. So that is gonna bring up our flanger window right here. So now let's take a minute and run over this window, talk about all the knobs, buttons, and dials, and what they all do. Starting at the top here, we've got our reset all button. Next to that, we've got our lock plugin window and preset manager. Coming down a little bit, we've got a plus button here, which allows you to save presets. And once you've saved some presets, they would appear right here. Right now we're at our default settings, but if I click this drop down, it's gonna show us any presets that we've saved, or you're gonna see these four, which are actually already here in DaVinci Resolve. So you'll see any presets that you've got show up right here. Now these two little buttons right here allow you to cycle through your different presets, which is pretty nice. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset all. So we're back to the beginning here. Next, you've got the A and B toggle buttons. It allows you to set some settings on A, set some different settings on B, and allows you to toggle back and forth to see which ones you like. If you want a little more info about that, link above, you can go check out that video. Coming down below that, you've got the on off toggle button right here. Turns the effect off when it's gray, on when it's red. You've got your input format, stereo, mono, left or right. And now down below that, we've got a graphical representation of what's happening with our effect. So you've got your right and left channels here. Then you've got your delay time along the bottom in milliseconds. Looking at the right hand side here, this is a graph that shows us the frequency range that's getting affected based on however we are editing our clip. On the right here, we've got our output meter. It's gonna tell us our levels that are coming out of the effect. And keep in mind, you may need to boost your levels a little bit because a lot of the effects that we've used here in DaVinci Resolve, they kind of reduce the gain or the volume of your uh, audio clip a little bit. So you may need to boost it up a little bit at the end. Keep that in mind. The next section we have down here is the modulation. So this is going to be the low frequency oscillator settings that you can change that will change how the effect sounds. So over here, we have three different choices for uh, how the effect will react. The first one is sine, which is a smooth change rate between the sounds that you hear. The next one is a triangle, and this is a jerky rate. It's gonna sound a little more uh, aggressive or just a little more sharp uh, when it makes the changes. And the last one we have here is sawtooth, and this is gonna be a little bit more abrupt of a change. Next, we have the rate. So this is basically the speed of the low frequency oscillator. Do you want it to go really fast? you want it to go slow and we'll try that out in a second here you can hear the difference the next one here is the depth now the depth is going to affect the length or time of that warble sound that you're going to hear which is basically if the effect so from the start of that effect till you get the full body sound of that effect how long do you want that to take do you want it to be short do you want it to be long and that's what the depth is going to affect so the next section we have here is width and that consists of expansion. So how long is it between the delay of the right and left channels? What does that sound like? What's, what's the expansion there sound like? The next section we have here is feedback. The first one amount is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Do you want uh, more of the flange effect coming in there or do you want, uh, it's not actually less, it's actually like an inverted amount of the effect. So you'll have to play with that. You can see how that sounds, but uh, you know, you crank it up if you want more or if you want a, a slightly inverted or different sound, you crank it down. And again, remember, you can always double click any of these to reset them to their default settings. And the high ratio here is going to filter the range of frequencies that affect the feedback signal. So you can play with that and see how it affects your clip as well. And finally, we have the output section. Again, the wet dry mix, as with all of our effects, determines the amount of the effect that's applied to your track or to your original audio. Obviously, the more you have, the 100% wet is 100% of the effect going onto your track. And if you took it all the way down to dry, that's no effect is being applied. And you can even see the graph change in there as I crank it up. So I'm gonna double click and reset that for now. And level is the last one we have here. Again, if you look at your output meters here and you notice that they're a little low coming out of the effect, you can go ahead and crank this guy up a little bit and just get a little bit of the gain back that you might've lost as the audio went through this effect. So that's a quick overview of the window, the knobs, the buttons, the dials, what they do. Let's take a look at two samples here. I've got a guitar. We're going to throw the effect on there, see how that sounds. And then uh, we're just going to throw it on that voice clip that you heard in the beginning of this video, just so you can see how that works. Because uh, every once in a while, somebody wants to make a crazy weird sound in alien voice or something. So all right, let's check out these samples here. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a few clips in my timeline. This first one we're going to take a look at is an electric guitar. Now I'm going to play it for you with no flanger applied to it. And then we're going to go ahead and add it in so you can see the difference here. So I'm actually going to bring up my flanger here. I'm going to turn it off by clicking on the little uh, toggle button right here. Now let's play through the guitar track so you can hear what it sounds like without the flanger. And then we'll go ahead and apply it. So here's without the flanger. All right, so there's a bit of the guitar track without any flanger applied to it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the flanger because I've already added it to the track. It's already there, obviously. So let's use one of the presets that are here. I'm gonna choose, uh, let's go large and low. So I don't know how it's gonna sound. We're gonna play through it and see what we get. And I'll play through it once with it on, then I'll turn it on and off uh, while it's playing through just so you can hear how it sounds. So let's uh, take a listen here.
So there's with it. Now let's just turn it off and I'll turn it on halfway through so you can hear the difference here. But uh, hopefully you guys can hear it. I can hear it on my end. So here we go. And now you can try some of these other uh, options here, you know, see how that sounds. So I think you could definitely hear a difference there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Can you hear the difference? Do you recognize the sound? Now I can go through all these knobs, dials, and buttons here and change things, make it sound however you want. You can do all kinds of cool stuff here. That's up to you. You just play with it to get the sound that you're looking for. So now let's take a look at the voice track that you heard earlier in this video. And to make that sound, I've put the flanger onto the track here. And let me go ahead and open this up because it's already here. Let's turn it off and here's what the voice sounds like with no flanger applied. Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're talking the flanger audio effect here in our audio series. All right, so that is the regular vocal, no effect applied to it. Now let's go ahead and turn on the flanger and I'm going to go ahead and select this uh, robo voice preset and you can hear how that sounds. That's just the default preset here. Didn't make any changes. So here's how that sounds. Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the... Yeah, pretty crazy, right? So if you go through, change some of these things a little bit, you can make it sound a little different. You can add to it, you know, you can bring it down a little bit. You just got to play with it and get a sound that you're looking for for your particular video. Now today we're talking the flanger audio effect here in our audio series. And if I turn down the rate here, then it's not going to go back and forth so fast. You'll see what that does here. Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Now today we're talking the flanger audio effect here in our audio series. It was happening guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today it was happening guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. So that is it guys for this flanger effect here in DaVinci Resolve. Hope you guys are learning a little something, enjoying this audio series, and at least getting an idea of what some of these clips can do. Now this one, I would throw it on a guitar like we already talked about, but hey, if you want some kind of crazy voice or something, maybe you want to go ahead and throw on the flanger, give it a try. Hey, you never know what kind of sound you can make, right? Could be kind of cool. So if you guys learned a little something in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we are almost done with this audio series. If you want to see any of the ones we already did, check over here. You can take a look at some of those. You might find it a little interesting, eh? All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.